Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Legends lore video. So, during the Yuuzhan Vong War, a squad of B2s beat up a bunch of Yuuzhan Vong. And that's all we have to talk about, so thanks for tuning in. Well, that's not quite it, but it was the reason for their awards. So, if that's all you're interested in, well, now you know. For everyone else, let's cover the basics. The Super Battle Droid was really an incredible advancement over the B1. It was menacing, almost 2 meters tall, and extremely heavy and powerful. It was encased in a blaster-resistant armored shell, and it had built-in configurable weapons. Here's what the Essential Guide to Warfare says about the model. Despite their limitations, mostly related to the fact that they were essentially dumb Terminators, and those are my words, B2s largely solved the Trade Federation's problems, adding needed muscles to the rank of B1s, also proving adaptable to a number of combat roles, mounting missiles in place of their forearm cannons, swimming to reach their targets, or strapping on rocket packs and taking to the skies to intercept gunships. However, as we all know, the droid armies of the CIS were were all shut down by the end of the Clone Wars, as Vader turned off the universal control signal on Mustafar. This led to, and I quote now the essential guide to droids, the end of the Super Battle Droid's three standard years of dominance. However, that same source continues, telling us that the droid's life doesn't end there. Battle droids across the galaxy were eventually recovered, I'm assuming especially following the days of the Empire, and were often employed by crime lords and other private individuals. I assume as we get to later, that battle droids also made their way into the hands of planetary militias. The B2's total lack of self-preservation instincts, combined with its integrated weaponry, relatively simple design and programming, plus its thick armor, made it an obvious choice for a variety of duties, from bodyguarding to basic planetary defense. And this takes us to the Yuuzhan Vong War, an era which saw extragalactic invaders ravage the galaxy. They didn't capture planets and install governors or suppress local populations. Rather, they destroyed everything in their sight, ravaging planets and changing them to fit their specific needs. The Vong were opposed by not only the New Republic, but eventually basically everyone across the galaxy who could take up arms. And on this note, the Essential Guide to Droids tells us that during the Vong War, a platoon of super battle droids dubbed the Orange Panthax beat back an occupation force of Yuuzhan Vong firebreathers on the planet Mentessa, earning the unit a special commendation by the Galactic Alliance's Chief of State, Cal Omis. So this is admittedly a pretty short blurb, but is interesting and actually tells us a lot if you read between the lines. First of all, a Panthak is a feline predator native to the planet Mantessa, suggesting to me at least that this wasn't some roving battle droid squad, but was probably serving the planetary government. Yuuzhan Vong firebreathers are, as the name would suggest, basically a Vong Bayat that was sort of a fire-breathing siege weapon. The heat-resistant armor of the B2 would have been very helpful in this case. We also know, based on the fact that the commendation came from Galactic Alliance Chief of State Cal Omis, that the battle may have occurred after EBAC, which was in the final year of the war. Now it is possible that Omis retroactively gave this award, but the fact that the Vong had pierced the inner rim at this point suggests that it was probably pretty late in the war. And the late stages of the Vong invasion saw the Vong beginning to bleed resources, especially ground troops, which they had trouble recovering due to their overextension, which was almost inherent in their galaxy-wide invasion. Protecting a fertile inner rim planet from Vong forming, and perhaps the establishment of a new ship womb or biot producer, was certainly worthy of commendation. As a general note, droids were actually a great tool against the Yuuzhan Vong, although the B2 may not have been great against Vong warriors because of their tendency to fight up close. Obviously the YVH is well known for being badass, but other less sophisticated droids could also be used to great effect, mostly because they infuriated the Vong, who saw not only droids, but all machinery as an affront to their religion and their gods. The Vong would go out of their way to destroy machines, even if it meant losing assets, resources like food, or time. The New Republic were so eager to take advantage of this that they even at times faked droids, as they did at the Battle of Ithor. 
Here's a quote from Dark Tide 2, Rune. They defended it with automated blasters and peopled it with droid shells, cobbled together from spare parts and just enough circuitry to allow the machines a little motion. They knew that using what appeared to be droids to defend the target would likely unhinge the Yuzhan Vong and get them committed to a frenzy of destruction. Knowing the effectiveness of droids, it would have been really cool for the new Jedi Order to have a subplot about trying to reactivate the CIS droid armies, or just generally to somehow recover droid caches, but that's what happens when you start a series in 99, same time as The Phantom Menace. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this lore video. I thought it was an interesting little tidbit that I could expand in an interesting way, but let me know of course what you thought down in the comments. Today's question comes from Anzac, who asks, what is my opinion on the Star Star Wars comics where Luke actually listens to Yoda when he tells Luke not to go to Cloud City, and eventually leads to Vader joining the Alliance. So what he's referring to is Star Wars Infinities, and I really like those comics. Basically what they do is each takes a key aspect or turning point of one of the three original trilogy movies and changes it. For example, Luke dying on Hoth, how does that affect the rest of the saga? Or what if the first Death Star wasn't destroyed and instead Yavin was? If you want to see a coverage of those, I've actually done videos on them, just search up Eckhart's Ladder Star Wars Infinities. Anyway, if you have a question you'd like me to answer in the future, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck, and who knows, maybe I'll get to it, just make sure you subscribe with notifications on, so if I do, you don't miss it. Anyway, until next time guys, this has been your host Eckhart's Ladder, have a great week, and may the Force be with you.